engineering announcements from the IBA. Satellite television. Continuing our occasional series, this week, how the Mac system opens up the way towards the widescreen, higher definition television of the future. In transmitter news, the latest relays to be equipped with Channel 4, and details of new relays due at Chilfram in Dorset, Clennan Valley and South Brent in Devon, and in the West Midlands, Hales Owen. Recently, we saw how the Mac system for satellite broadcasting can give us as many as eight high-quality sound channels. The picture quality is better than PAL, with sharper pictures and free from cross-colour. But what about the longer-term future? With the eventual introduction of large-screen displays, conventional 625-line pictures start to look rather inadequate, whether PAL or Mac. And clearly, the amount of detail in the picture would need to be improved further, but there's rather more to it than just that. Traditionally, the shape of television pictures has an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. But in the cinema, the pictures tend to be wider, and for the larger screen television of the future, ideally we'd like to provide pictures with an aspect ratio of about 5 to 3. Subjective viewing tests have indicated this as a picture shape that provides a more pleasing effect, particularly on a big screen. Over the last few years, the broadcasters have taken a close look at the concept of high-definition television, or HDTV as it's known. With more lines, it is possible to produce television pictures of near cinema quality. Conventional 625 line pictures are designed to have sufficient resolution for viewing at a distance of six times the picture height. Increase the size of the picture, and the viewing distance becomes just three to four times the picture height. The effect on the viewer is a greater sense of realism, providing for the detail in the picture. Conventional pictures need a video bandwidth of around 5.5 MHz. For a large screen display, the eye needs to resolve the same amount of detail, but spread over roughly four times the area. So the number of lines would need to be doubled, and the video bandwidth quadrupled, in theory at least. Indeed, HDTV proposals based on just over a thousand line picture require a baseband bandwidth of some 20 to 30 megahertz. But the bandwidth needed for FM transmission from a satellite will be even greater, about 100 megahertz. That means it's impossible to transmit true HDTV pictures in any of the present broadcast bands, including 12 gigahertz. Bear in mind that the internationally agreed DBS channels in Europe are 27 MHz wide. It'll be many years before transmission becomes viable in any of the other higher frequency bands. But our research has shown that it isn't necessary to increase the number of transmitted lines in order to produce a picture with better definition. Using the MAC system, it is possible to broadcast high quality pictures that are suitable for large screen display. By keeping to the 625 line system for transmission, pictures can still be received using ordinary MAC decoders. But specially equipped receivers can reproduce a higher quality picture. The definition can even approach that of a thousand line picture. The picture can have a wider aspect ratio, around 5 to 3. And what's more, all these enhancements can be broadcast over conventional DBS channels the ordinary MAC receiver would continue to display pictures with a conventional aspect ratio of 4 to 3. So how do we achieve compatibility between widescreen transmission and conventional reception? There is more than one way, but here's an approach that our development engineers have shown can work in practice. MAC is made up of bursts of a digital signal followed by time-compressed vision. The data signal is broadcast at a rate of 20.25 megabits per second for 10 microseconds ahead of each line of picture. It allows up to eight high-quality sound channels. But what if we reduce the number of sound channels to two? We can use the time made available to broadcast additional luminance information. The enhanced receiver uses this to add on edges to the conventionally transmitted main part of the picture. In the meantime, the reduced data capacity is still sufficient for stereo sound. At the same time, we can increase the uncompressed baseband luminance bandwidth from the 5.6 MHz of ordinary MAC to perhaps around 7.5 MHz. On transmission, the signal just fits within the 27 MHz wide DBS channel. Coupled with the extra time allocated for the side of the picture, the overall increase in horizontal luminance resolution displayed by the enhanced receiver
can be as much as 60%, a worthwhile improvement. For the colour difference signals, the bandwidth already available in Mac is 2.8 MHz. That's more than double the 1.3 MHz of PAL. But where do we put the colour difference information for the extra picture edges? This can be placed in the field blanking interval in a similar way to teletext. But it doesn't take up all the spare lines, so we can still have widescreen pictures and teletext. The beauty of the system is that it's compatible with reception on a basic Mac receiver. The conventional decoder sees exactly the same luminance and colour difference information as it would with an ordinary Mac transmission. The extra sides to the picture, both luminance and colour difference, are simply ignored. But an enhanced Mac receiver picks out the extra sides and adds them to the main picture, recreating a widescreen image. And you really can't see the join. The extra picture information could be added either to the left of the main picture, or to the right, or on both sides. So far we've achieved a widescreen picture with improved horizontal resolution. But what about resolution in the vertical sense? After all, there still are only 625 lines, and only 575 of these contain picture information. In fact, we can improve the displayed vertical resolution without making any changes to the transmitted signal. The secret lies in digital processing in the receiver. This will convert the conventional interlaced picture to a sequential scan picture. In other words, instead of two interlaced scans of 312 and a half lines each, we display the entire picture in one scan every 50th of a second. The result on stationary pictures virtually double the vertical resolution. The improvement is less on areas of movement, but then the eye isn't so sensitive to detail where there's motion. Another benefit is a reduction in the flicker that's an inherent part of interlaced scanning. You've probably noticed that some teletext sets display text using non-interlaced scanning, and this gives a much steadier picture. The results, viewed on a projection screen and accompanied by stereo sound, are little short of stunning. The screen here measures almost 5 feet by 3 feet. The same picture, without the extra edges and the increased definition, can be viewed on an ordinary Mac receiver. We've shown how enhancements to the Mac system can bring higher definition into the home of the future, keeping the same transmitted line standard, using conventional DBS channels, and without making ordinary Mac receivers obsolete. But the feasibility of compatible higher definition widescreen television does depend to some extent on which version of Mac is used. The specification issued by the European Broadcasting Union includes CMac, DMac and D2Mac. There's also another variant, BMac. Stay with us for more about the different versions of Mac in a future edition of Engineering Announcements. Transmitter news now, starting with special announcements. In Mid Wales, the relay at Thlan Gadfin is due to be off this morning between 9.30 and 12.30. This is for aerial maintenance. Tomorrow in the Lake District, work by the Electricity Board means Kendall will be off between 1 and 4. This will also affect six dependent relays. On Thursday morning in Kent, the main station at Dover will be off between about 10.15 and 10.45 to allow a mass light to be changed. It will also affect nine dependent relays. Looking ahead to next Tuesday, in Scotland, Ross Neath will be off between 8 and 11 in the morning. This is for electrical work and will also affect Ardner Dam and Gairloch Head. In Derby, a new independent local radio transmitter is now broadcasting programmes from Radio Trent. The new transmitters are at Quarndon, about three miles northwest of Derby city centre. The VHF service on 102.8 MHz includes Derby itself and extends to Belper and Swaddlingcote. Daytime medium wave coverage on 945 kHz includes Matlock, Utoxeter and Ashby de la Zouch. Together with its well-established coverage in Nottingham, Radio Trent now reaches a population of about 1.8 million. New television relays now, and two relays expected to be ready at the end of the month. In Tor Bay, Clennon Valley. Television South West and TVAM on Channel 49, with Channel 4 on 42. The aerial group is B, vertically polarised. Also in Devon, near Buckfastley, South Brent. Television South West and TVAM on 43, and Channel 4 on 50. 
Again, its Group B aerials are vertically polarised. Now expected in early April, in the West Midlands, Hales Owen. Central and TVAM on 61 and Channel 4 on 54. The aerial group is CD, vertically polarised. Also in early April, Chilfram in Dorset. HTV West and TVAM on 45 and Channel 4 on 52. The aerial group is B, but in this case the polarisation is horizontal. Channel 4 next, and now on the air on South Uist, Kilbride on Channel 42, and in Northumberland, Catton Beacon on 50. These relays add another 1,750 people to Channel 4's coverage. But the relay at Headley Hope, which had been expected last week, has had to be delayed because of difficulties with the incoming signal feed. Due later this week, in Tayside, Methven on Channel 32, and Strathallan on 42. And that's all for this week. But if you have any technical queries on independent television or local radio, do contact us. We'll be back again next Tuesday at 9.15 and also at 12.15 in all regions except Wales. So from John Lovell and from me, Janet Smythe, goodbye until next week. Thank you.